Good morning and welcome to the League Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview show. Rickerton and New Plymouth on the dance card and Tirapa on Sunday. A great northern day to look forward to there. But before we look forward, let's look back, boys. Morning, Paul. Morning, Stephen. Paul, Tarzino Day. Great okay. day for Tiakau overall, but it was a great day all around, wasn't it? It certainly was. Uh, some uh, great displays of horsemanship, I thought, by a number of jockeys on the uh, day one of the carnival at Hastings. So, as you say, a uh, huge day for Tiako. Um, but, yeah, we've got the first group one in the bag, mm. and we're on... Onwards and upwards, on to better things. Good day, Steve, wasn't it? Morning. Yeah, I thought it was a really good day. Uh, the undercard was strong. Obviously, the Group 1 was well spoken about, one of our better Group 1s in the last few years. Uh, the Foxbridge form stacking up. We'll touch on that later <laughs> in the show, mm, yes. come confession time. Uh, <laughs> but also, I thought Tokyo Tycoon just put a few doubters to bed in terms of trials leading in. He produced a really strong speed rating, which bodes well to the future in the next coming months where he's got some big assignments, Tokyo Tycoon. But overall, a really good day. The track played well. There's a couple of early races that you thought naturally were dominated by on speed, but I thought that was tempo-related. So overall, the track played in, good, in really good order. No yeah. doubt here. No doubt what? No doubt. Oh, I wasn't a doubter. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but we'll get to that a bit later. We'll get to your best bet last yeah. week. Yeah. In due time, Paul. Mm. Uh, let's head up to uh, our Hamilton studio. Say good morning to Brendan Popperwell. Oh, BP. You just outdo yourself every week. There's the man on your jersey. Let's hope he's playing uh, come tomorrow night. Yes, he needs to be playing. So uh, let's hope that uh, Sean Johnson can be there for the Warriors on Saturday night. But you're right, boys. W what a weekend it was. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed being there. I, I thought the atmosphere, the energy. Uh, you, you could feel the energy of the racing industry. I, and we, we all know that there's been a, a lot of positive vibes ar around, obviously, uh, stake improvement. And, and, and when we see fields like we did on the weekend, uh, I think it really sets us up for what is going to be a terrific racing season. So, yeah, it was it was a great old day, and let's hope we get the same sort of weather in a couple of weeks' time there back at Hawke's Bay. You look, look very nice on course. How was Imperatrice, BP? I mean, uh, it was a decent uh, decent one there at Mooney Valley as well. Wasn't it? Uh, that, that was uh, a, a great way to cap off the, the racing weekend, wasn't it? Uh, when when, when Giga Kick was able to go, she looked flat, and then she just picked them up with a, a number of big bounds to put that race away. And of course, uh, the, the Everest was thrown out there straight away, wasn't it? And I know it's always been in the back of the mind, but they're, they're pretty keen uh, in Team Tiako to, to, to stick to the valley and, and to stick going uh, the left-handed way of going uh, as opposed to going towards the Everest. So, um, yeah, exciting times in front of us with here in Australia. A lot of talk out of that about the ride of Craig Williams. Yeah, oh, don't get me started on that. There's nothing wrong with that ride. Anyway, yeah, well, yeah. Victim of circumstance. Anyway, you've got you got me started. Oh, you didn't mean you didn't mean to. Anyway, uh, before we get back to BP and his maiden of the week, we want to have a look at stuff from the last couple of weeks you might have missed. The Mudgeway, where we had Miss Potential and Front Shinzig outside a leader. The jeweled Bell Muse, and look at Excellent! Look at Excellent flying right down the outside. Amazing! He is a megastar! Will we see something like that here today? And also, no reprisal. Portland bends off the track here. Portland Sparky's won it. Second to go by. One New Zealand Warriors mile, 1,600 metres. Up the Waz, they're off. Oh, they're about to up the ante like we're up the Waz as they come down to Jumbo. And behind is Allegro Warrior and Apara Warrior up the Waz. The Warriors boys, uh, Cameron George and Tokyo Tycoon, Stacey Jones in this one. Uh, let's see if they complete the hatchet tonight against the Penrith Panthers. Yeah, up the Waz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Waiting for it. We got it. It's fantastic. Emily, we'll pass it back to you, but boy, it certainly has been a stunning day in the bay up the Waz. Yeah, thanks, so Brendan. Beautifully uh, surmised, and as you said, up the Waz. That's it from us. A very good morning to you and everybody that's tuning in. Uh, look, what a day in front of us. It starts at quarter past seven in the morning, doesn't it, with the All Blacks kicking off the Rugby World Cup and then rolls into what is going to be a spectacular day here. Day number one of the Carnival. So Sullivan Award time for the week, BP. Who have you found as your ride of the week? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, a little bit like Madonna. Oh, um, uh, Mid-concert just, just decided to um, have a little bit of a change. <laughs> just putting it, bringing a new wardrobe. It looks, like he's, it looks like he's just jumped off Black Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Being on the grind, on the grind. Yeah, on the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. 
Out joined now by Perfect Moment, Warm Breeze, Ponzi Pony, Vodavir releasing with a great run. Here's Sam Wynn and Vodavir. Oh, there's a fallback in the field, but Vodavir took the lead and Vodavir has won it. How bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Nothing quite like riding one home, is there? Riding home a winner. Looked like it was a Colts and Geldings race as well. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, OK, BP, back to you. Time for your maiden of the week. What did you find for us? Uh, yes, we've gone to Hawke's Bay. That was great stuff, wasn't it? Um, let's go to Hawke's Bay. And the maiden has that race. We've gone with a, a mare that won this race. Uh, beautifully ridden as well, I thought, too, by Katie Hurcock. Used the barrier draw, positioned up. There's going to be a number of winners out of these particular races, which you see quite often. Uh, there were some race winners in amongst the field. Third horse was pretty good, Rising Tide. Um, I think we'll be wanting to have something on that next time to the races. But look, second horse has got close to the, to the leader, uh, but had enough left in reserve to win. So uh, pretty keen to just say that the race should be a good one. But fancy like us uh, winning, what was it, race four, the maiden as at as our maiden of the week. Steve, uh, we're going to come to you now, crunching the numbers. Um, or around fa oh, fancy like that first. It was a good, a decent one. It was a good win. Uh, she had the right setup. She ran a good second behind I'm Wonderful tonight at Hastings a few months ago. Got freshened up, had a little bit of work being the local uh, as, a, as a base in terms of fitness. And uh, interesting, she opened around about $5 earlier in the week. She got out to about $6.57. $7. I think that was naturally on the draw, but she drawn barrier 11. But she had shown tactical speed, and a, yeah, albeit in a light database, but a lot of, lot of punters out there, and I've learned over the years, can overplay a wide draw for a horse that's got tactical speed. I, I almost see it as a, as a slight positive, not even a neutral. If you've got tactical speed, you've drawn wide, you can set up your own uh, tempo in the first furlong or two. Um, and uh, you know, as, as BP alluded, Kate Hurcock got across, found the paint. Ran even fractions to the 600 and almost a similar uh, split to the last 600. So, look, a horse that's got promise and, uh, yeah, one to watch going through the grades. Great. Got across from Barry 11. Yeah. Without spending too much at, at all, she got a bit of a mid race breather. Well, I thought kicked it was away. a great ride by Kate Hurcock. And yeah, it was. By the time she kicked uh, at the turn, they were chasing a dragon. And it was, firm, it was yeah. firm very late. It got from $7, as I mentioned, top flight. Firm right into around about $485. When you see that initial move from also tactical speed from a wide gate, often mm. you know that they're still going to look to go forward yeah. and put itself in the, in, in the first two or three. OK, fancy like that. BP's Maiden of the Week. You can count on me like one, two, three. Time for Steve to crunch the numbers for us where you select a race or something that we need to have a look at some of the data from last week. What race have you found for us or what horses have you found for us? Yeah, I'm going to go back to Hastings, the premier meeting. I'm going to look at one of the features, the Gold Trail Stakes uh, for the three-year-old fillies over 1,200 metres. You hear Frozen. It ran at roughly the 500 metre mark. I've highlighted four horses here in the second half of the field. And Pendabell, second last dinner with a Cerise hat, you see there. Chica Mojitos, uh, last out in the purple silks. Orchestral out of the James Wellwood barn. And also Quintessa, who mapped in that neutral position, was the eventual, uh, eventual winner. When watching this race live, I thought initially Orchestral and others were a bit flat and disappointing, Thaddeus. But mm. looking at the overall time, how slow they went out in front, those out the back, mathematically, had little to no chance. Uh, the last 600 was 35-12, fastest of the day, and one length sharper than the Group 1 Tarzino. Four of the top five on the home turn finished in that order, a race that was definitely tempo-related and dominated by on speed, with the exception of Quintessa. So what can we take out of looking at this race in terms of the sectionals, the closing sectionals? Well, graphically, I brought up here the fastest last 600 splits through the entire meeting. You see eight of the top 11 bounce out of the gold trail stakes, headed by Quintessa, 34.51. You've got the Impenda Bow, 34.52, a fraction mm. behind Quintessa. Chica Mojito, 34.63. Shanti Lace, on speed, facing the breeze, recorded 34.82. Orchestral, 35.03, uh, despite running 10th. Mm. Look, my overall assessment, I don't think there were too many bad runs in the, in the Phillies race. Um, uh, Quintessa uh, clearly has set the benchmark. 
Uh, but those horses I highlighted early on, they're definitely worth following. So it's a forgive no is what you're saying. It's yeah, a forgive and wait for, for them until they step up to seven furlongs in a mile, which is going to be their grand final later in the spring. Okay, that's very interesting stuff. We might be putting it through orchestral, or putting a line through orchestral, or any of those runners that finish back in that gold trail stakes. Right, boys, let's get to some previews of some races. We're spreading it far and wide this week, but we're going to start at Rickerton. What are we playing on down there, Steve? You'll see it's had an upgrade in the last 24 hours to a good four Rickerton. Now, we raced at Rickerton a couple of weeks ago, early part of September. Uh, the rail was out 11 metres that occasion, and it was on a soft six. The rail is back into the seven metre range, and as I mentioned, we have an upgrade of good, uh, good four with reasonable weather, so uh, it should, uh, should suit most horses uh, with a good mm. four. And um, yeah, the, the rail out being seven metres, they're still looking to protect that track. Uh, come the business end yeah. of their carnival in November. OK, let's go to race number eight on the card, gents. It's the Canterbury Bell Stakes. For the Phillies, the three-year-old, Steve, uh, run us through this market. You're headed by Viva, Viva Vienna at $1.90. That is the original quote. Illicit Dreams in that second line, four twenty into three sixty. A rhetorical at a $7.50 quote in that third line with Lady Sass. A Sugar at $21 off a shortener of 18 and Miss Speaks at 26 So... Uh, there is a little bit of a tail. Uh, it's a race that's dominated in terms of betting volume in the first two. Um, at this stage, Illicit Dreams holds three times more money than Viva Vienna, and that's why we've seen a little bit of a firm 420 into 360. Yeah, OK, BP, well, look, this is probably a pretty obvious race we'll probably have a look at shortly, but Viva Vienna was good uh, last time out, beating a lot of her race rivals. Look, she was. She found that position that she wanted to be, and that was uh, in front. Uh, as you said, this is the obvious form reference because second and third are also very good out of this race and, and you've got Hot Coco who finishes into that fifth position. Of course, the horse he ran fourth in this race that we were waiting for has actually been sold, uh, that being a cleaner Mave. So yeah. I, I do like the second horse out of this race, though, um, Illicit Dreams. A couple of key things around her chances for this weekend is going to 1,200 metres. Of course, this was 1,000 metres. Uh, a, a race where I, I felt she was getting closer as they got to the line uh, over a short course of a thousand metres. She's won over 1,200 metres in a Champagne Stakes here and also 1,300 metres. They're her two victories uh, for, for Illicit Dreams. If she can find that position again where Viva Vienna jumps, gets to the rail and Illicit Dreams doesn't have to do too much work to get to that position of outside leader. She does give herself an, uh, an opportunity, I, I, I feel, over 1,200 metres to maybe try and nab Viva Vienna if she, if she can keep that horse in her sights. So I, I do understand the move uh, of, the, of 420 to $3.60 mm -hmm. uh, around Illicit Dreams. Um, and Viva Vienna is short enough at 190 I think they can run the Quinella. But at this early stage, I am liking Illicit Dreams to possibly uh, go one better from a couple of weeks ago. Paulie, initial thoughts here? Were there on those two top two in the market? Yeah, I agree with BP. I, I thought Illicit Dreams probably had a, a tough run um, in that uh, replay that we just saw. Um, couldn't quite get across um, and had to sit outside. I think it was Viva Vienna and uh, Warning Signal mm. um, and kept coming down the straight. I, I thought I didn't want to look a rhetorical uh, mm. in behind there. I thought she needed the blowout um, and she'll be a lot fitter for that run. Uh, Warren Kennedy jumps on your uh, man this time. Don't mind, Warren. Um, unless he's been called up for the spring box. I see Malcolm Marks is out, so um, they might need another hooker. Great uh, gymnast, Warren Kennedy. Indeed. Last week. Yeah, anyway, flexible. Yeah, flexible. Very flexible. Carry flexible. on. Carry so, on. Yeah, yeah, I thought rhetorical at the price at around 750 currently. Um, and the extra 200, I think, will do her well. Um, so, yeah, the, the top two sort of pick themselves. Mm. Um, Viva Vienna gets the gun draw again. Um, so, Sam Weatherly can sort of can decide um, where he wants to sit and, and maybe even dictate um, the pace of the race. And mm. as long as Tegan Newman can get Illicit Dreams across this time, mm. um, certainly in there. Yeah, but okay. yeah, r rhetorical for minor at the price. Rhetorical, yeah, OK, interesting. I mean, the other race that we want to have a look at is at Amaru uh, with the win of Lady Sass, Steve, uh, who's in this market and has a bit of support. It does. Um, look, it was a good win, uh, only a four-horse field. Um, she came off the heels, you see her coming down the outside, those red numbers there, ignore the two, the 600 last 600, it's against open class, but the class rating was solid enough. If you want to compare it to what it has to find in terms 
of the two favourites in Viva Vienna, Alyssa Dreams, what they produced at Rickerton a couple of weeks ago. It needs to find five lengths, so I'm taking a bit of a set against this race. Yes, three-year-olds can improve significantly race by race at this time of the year, but just on exposed form, I'm just seeing, I just want to see a little bit more from this uh, Lady Sass form line uh, versus Viva Vienna and also Illicit Dreams. Interesting money for uh, Illicit Dreams, though. Quite a quite a push against the favourite, who I thought would improve again, Viva Vienna. Yeah, I think the key, uh, and I don't, I'm not sure if BP mentioned it, but Illicit Dreams went into that race two weeks ago on the back of no trials. No trials whatsoever, where Viva Vienna had a trial leading in. That might have been the difference, the fact that Illicit Dreams had drawn a wide gate had this at three wide facing the breeze, albeit it was down the chute, so they didn't have to go around a sharp bend. Uh, but definitely had to cover a little bit more ground compared to Viva Vienna. I, I think they'd map identically here, one, two. I think Viva Vienna will find the paint, will lead, and Illicit Dreams will sit outside it. I I'm leaning towards Illicit Dreams. I agree with BP's thoughts. I think the 190 versus 360, 52% chance versus 27. I, I, I have them a little bit closer together. So, look, I think Illicit Dreams could start closer to $3.04. Okay. Uh, Paulie, anyone else down that page? Steve mentioned a bit of a tail here. Uh, you got anyone, one of those Paul Mawadi specials tucked away in this race? Or? Look, I've learnt my lesson from Hastings. You, you follow Tiarco, don't you, <laughs> when they're up at the, towards the top of the market? They're pretty much always at the, towards the top of the market. So, yeah. yeah, Viva Vienna, I think, will still be very, very hard to beat from the ace draw. Um, but I do give rhetorical a bit of a chance, and I, yeah, at the price. I'm willing to have a little well, It's been a money for rhetorical last time, it first up, and it, it will have improved, you would have thought. Yeah. Some natural improvement out of that. Okay. OK, BP, sum up the Canterbury Bellows. Is there anything we've missed here, or do we just have to be focusing on these favourites this year? Oh, I think that's the, the key form reference, isn't it, from a, from a couple of weeks ago with what we saw there at, at Rickerton. And, and a very high chance that you'll see horses map in, a, in, in the same position, Viva Vienna in front, rhetorical, uh, looking at maybe tucking behind the, the, the stable mate and getting that trailing position and if Illicit Dreams can move over and get to outside leader uh, that, that's where they could find their positions and look uh, there's 350 about the Quinella on the 1-2 combination fixed at the moment uh, that, that might be worth looking into if you are liking Illicit Dreams and, and Viva Vienna uh, I, I'm keen to take the, the 360 on Illicit Dreams to try and nab Viva Vienna late in the piece uh, and yeah, rhetorical to, to, to finish in the money and, and as I said maybe a similar finish to what we saw a couple of weeks ago uh, for our listed feature coming up out of Rickerton in the Canterbury Bell Stakes. <laughs> Gee, I don't know what customers did to anger overs the overs gods uh, last weekend. It's a tricky time of year got those horses that are up and running on uh, or been up and running on wetter tracks and those horses resuming not a winner amongst them, but some really big moves. And as I always say, it's worth noting these down. Sacred Dream was 7 into $3.30 there. Uh, in race number two at the Bay, Aguera for the Pike team, 10s into 5s. It didn't fire. Uh, Spencer, 16s into 5s, 8th. The Slipper Island for the Pikes again, 6.50 into 3.63rd. Reverberations is a massive move, started odds on. Could only finish second. Super time, coming off a win on the synthetic. Uh, managed to run second tens into 450. Love affirmations 48 into 270. Lay boots, don't forget Waverley. Lay boots 950 into 450. All in Blackberry 26 into nines. And Crafty Colin in race number nine 18s into 750s. Unfortunate situation where the Overs gods were angry last week. Let's hope we can get a little, little, bit, little bit more love from them this weekend. Wow. BP, uh, we'll come to you for the Lance O'Sullivan Award, but Paul was sort of mentioning you probably had the choice of a few. You mentioned Kate Urcock on your maiden of the week, but yep. where did you land? Who's getting the coveted Lance O'Sullivan Award this week? Yeah, there were a, a number of rides out there that were uh, in the reckoning for this week's uh, award. I'm going to give it to Warren Kennedy, though, for his ride aboard Apostrophe, because this was an absolute beauty. Drew an outside gate, got back, and if you were on apostrophe, you're probably thinking, well, we really are going to need the luck to go our way. Uh, settled last and then decided to go for a bit of luck closer towards the rail and it all opened up. And, and look, sometimes you're on these horses and, and you don't quite get this run uh, and, you, and you note them down in your little black book or we'll throw them into the race tracker and think, OK, we'll be wanting to follow that horse next time to the race as well. Considering what happened leading up to this race day two with apostrophe, they were to have Donovan Cooper. Uh, also, our well wishes go to uh, Donovan as well because he uh, he has had a nasty fall where he has 
um, broken his pelvis, uh, I do believe, in, in a track work incident. So that's why he uh, w was unable to ride. And, and it meant that they went with a senior jockey in Warren Kennedy who couldn't claim. So that was all of a sudden a horse who had to carry the 60 kilos from an outside gate. There was a lot of negatives against Apostrophe winning that race. And Warren was able to produce that. So uh, Warren Kennedy gains the Lance O'Sullivan Award for this week for that, uh, for that ride. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. Paulie, there was a lot of action, uh, and it's probably on the inner half of the track at Hawke's Bay. Um, well, we just saw something there with apostrophe. We did, exactly. Yeah, they were trying to come in sort of, sort of a five horse widths. Um, so that probably means that someone was doing a bit of hard time at the bay. Where did you find your unluckiest runner of the week this week? Yeah, that's where we go, isn't that it? That's it, is the yeah. bay? Yeah, OK. And it's the, uh, the runner Rockburn. Oh, yes. Um, oh. Is that it? That yes. is it. Yes. <laughs> Come back so, to us. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was hoping that we'd get the, uh, a bit of coverage before that yeah, where look at this. he had to dodge more horses than Luxon dodges questions. Um, he finally gets out, absolutely flies home. He didn't get clear uh, riding space until around the 125, the 100 metre mark, and he still recorded the last, the quickest last 200 sectional. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you're on Rockburn, um, he was one that couldn't find the inside uh, alley. And had to come right round the field. Yeah, he worked, we do, did see that. He had to. He was looking for a run up the inside, wasn't he? And he just, was. And just the gate shut, and then stormed home. So he did. Yeah, had to come. Yeah, off heels, off heels, round. Little what? money for him on Saturday as well. There was um, no little money. Oh, so little money. Yeah. He drifted considerably. Uh, I think he opened single figures and was at least in the mid teens with an SP. So uh, he wasn't. In terms of a punting stable, John Barry screwed down to win first up. Uh, circumstances might have been around that in terms of the draw. He'd drawn an inside gate and found himself, as you mentioned, last rail and had to come off heels and come right to the outside and do his best work late. The game was over. But yeah, whether he goes to day two, day three, remains to be seen, but he'll be kept safe by us, no doubt. <laughs> in the black book anyway, Paul? Oh, I think so. Yeah, deservedly so. OK, boys, let's head down to New Plymouth. We've got a big meeting there. It's extreme day. Uh, at New Plymouth, I think. Uh, the 3,200 and 10 metre race there on the card. But let's have a look at weather and track first, Steve, for New Plymouth. Yeah, heavy nine. Uh, that was updated this morning on the 15th. So, look, it's been a heavy nine. Last 24 hours was a heavy 10 earlier in the week. Uh, we had the last meeting here on the 19th of August. It was a heavy 10 rails out four metres there. So, uh, if we bring up graphically, I think the rail will be out four metres uh, from memory. Uh, they've had a little bit of rain overnight just to keep in that heavy nine range, but uh, hopefully we'll get an upgrade, upgrade some stage tomorrow, possibly an eight. I thought initially we'd get back to a seven, but with that four mils of rain overnight, maybe not. OK. Let's have a look at race number five. It's the open 1,400 metres there, graphically there, the heavy nine. Currently, hopefully we get back to an eight or maybe even a seven, but race number five on the card is the open 1,400, Steve, and a pretty dominant favourite here. Yeah, Mustang Valley comes out of the Fox Bridge. Uh, that's A grade form when heading into a race of this calibre. Mustang Valley, $2.40. Peaked at $3.50 on Wednesday, Mustang Valley. Accounts for 65% of the hold for the first 48 hours of trading. Clearly the best back runner here. In fact, the best back runner up and down the country in early betting Mustang Valley. In front of Flower of Wanaka at a $5 price. Ladies Man, $7.50 out of turn to 8 Chajaba 750 out of full point to 8.5. Tabby Court 10 into 9. The only other firm outside the favourite. 10 into 9 for Tabby Court. Just ask me, 10 out to 12. Best of the rest is Dawn Parade, Awkward Gate, 14 out to 16. But overall summary, Mustang Valley, clearly the best back runner when it comes to the feature NP. Okay, well just before we head to PP, uh, Mally Storm um, come out of this race now. Just it's going to head to Tarapa, Sunday. I gather. Sam Weatherly's booked to ride in one of the open handicap races on Sunday. So Mally Stone was a $10 chance. OK. Here's the Foxbridge plate, BP. This is Mustang Valley resuming up the rail here in the black hat. Yeah, look, um, A-grade form, isn't it? Uh, when you think what's happened out of this race uh, and going into the, the Group 1 last weekend with these two horses running the Quinella just a different way, way around. And just with the way that, that that day panned out for Mustang Valley, the, the, the track, you know, got into a, a better position maybe than where we were sitting when we were talking about the race. Uh, it, she looked to be a decent chance if maybe the track was going to 
hover around that sort of eight, nine uh, bracket for her for her first up assignment over 1,400 metres. She trialled well leading in. But we also know that she's a horse that's going to get better with a, a run like that under her belt where she now moves to 1,400 metres. You think about mm -hmm. how she was able to win the Merrill Metric Mile, of course, around this time last year before going on and uh, you know running a great race in what was it, the Arrowfield and then winning the Livermore Classic. So she, she, she's at a time of the year where she races well. She looks awfully hard to beat. Tristan Moodley gets a claim, which brings her back to 57 kilos. Look, there, there is an obvious horse here. I think that, that it can test her, and that is due to the weights with, with Flower of Wanaka, with just how unlucky that horse was last time to the races. Uh, but in, in terms of a pure Group 1 class, uh, she has to give five kilos to that horse, yes, but um, she, she's going to be very hard to beat on a track condition that should be right in her wheelhouse, really, at, at New Plymouth. Yeah, no doubt about that. There are Mustang Valley will love the eight uh, at strikes. Chajaba, ladies' man. Uh, that race uh, that Chajaba took out there at New Plymouth, uh, a ladies' man running third, Paul, these two in your numbers? They, they certainly are. Uh, Chajaba absolutely loves New Plymouth, loves the sting out of the track. Uh, and although he meets a tougher field here than he did um, in this start uh, when winning, um, he carries three and a half kilos less than he did that last time out. So um, certainly in the numbers, ladies' man. Uh, who ran third here. Well, the race shape really didn't do ladies' man any favours. He was back on the inside near last, kept giving up the straight um, in behind um, those first two. And he's got Michael McNabb on board this time. And, of course, um, McNabb had a bit of a day at the Cambridge Synthetic midweek where he won, won the first four races and ran second in three of the next four. Um, so, yeah, he's riding well. Yeah. And um, Alan Sharrick and New Plymouth, very, very hard to leave out. <laughs> there was money for ladies' man that day, Steve, if I remember. Uh, it, was a, it was a good, solid run uh, leading into this. It was solid. Uh, look, he's going to take natural improvement. Obviously, he's looking for a mile and a quarter and beyond later in his campaign. He has won second up at a previous campaign, but if you go to most recent, this time last year, he didn't wind up into his, uh, his revs until maybe fourth or fifth up, and that's when he hit mile and a quarter. So... Look, I'm willing to risk him slightly, second up. Uh, we know if uh, you know, a stayer can resume well and sprint well over a shorter distance, but um, look, it does have Michael McNabb services, uh, mm -hmm. ladies' man. I'm just a little bit nervous where he maps. Obviously, he's, he's drawn an awkward gate. He'll get back to the last third naturally. He, he takes a little bit to find his feet. There, there might be an opportunity where Michael can sit on the back of Mustang Valley. Potentially, in Mustang Valley, I've got Matt no, no better than midfield in that neutral position. If there's a three-wide train, they'll hopefully grab it with Mustang Valley, but there might be an opportunity for Michael just to stalk the favourite. OK. Uh, BP, this race uh, that you referred to earlier with uh, Flower of Wanaka uh, was at Whanganui and was uh, mm. pretty unlucky. Tabby's Court uh, has also won this race, and that won that, that race at Whanganui. Yeah, you're right. And uh, look, um, Tevi Court does drop another three and a half kilos off the back of this effort too as well, bear in mind. Uh, so that's the winner of the race. But Flower Wanaka was a horse who was just looking for that right split at the right time and it just didn't quite happen for Lily, but has still run a super race to finish uh, into second position. We know her efforts through uh, the winter. She was good enough to win a weight for age Todonga Classic at Hawke's Bay. Uh, so she does bring very good form into this race. Uh, the, the, the wet surface will be an, an assistance to her. We know that with her form on heavy ground. And look, you've got to remember that too. That race here was on a soft six uh, on an improving track uh, there by the time we got to that race uh, in, the, in the middle of the day. So th there's, there's going to be good factors for her drawn well, uh, the, the wetter track conditions. Uh, but look, Tevi Court does get into the race well too with Lemmy Douglas claim uh, taking three kilos off. I, I am liking that Mustang Valley Flower of Wanaka combination. Uh, yes, they're the, the, the top two favourites in the race. Currently 6.50 uh, the fixed Quinella uh, on Mustang Valley and Flower of Wanaka. And it's I, like BP, of I like BP finding these uh, fixed Quinellas for us. I like that when that happens. Was Flower of Wanaka, was that doing hard time? Uh, out of that race? A former leg up hard timer, for, indeed. <laughs> a former leg up hard timer. What do we make of Just Ask Me, Steve? Um, look, the winner of the Open Naki Cup is you know, an absolute quality animal. Big weight, does get the four kgs off with Tony Davies. But, yeah, what, what, what do we make of Just Ask Me in this race? You can see here this is an Open Naki Cup win. You can make comparisons to what it's uh, contesting on Saturday, open 1,400 metres. It was top weight. They didn't go extremely hard, just even part of the 600. They've rattled home, so that puts more merit into the victory. 
Post this race, he's gone down to Christchurch, he's contested the Winter Cup over 1,600 metres on a genuine heavy tier, and he's come back up here. I'm sure they're working back from a liver mole. I just don't like the setup for Saturday's assignment. Look, he's got as much ability as the rest of them, probably excluding Mustang Valley, uh, just yeah. ask me. But he's a very hard horse to place this time of the year when he's top weight, even with the claims. He still sits at close to 60 kilograms and with the improving track has to be a negative as well. Look, he's no, he's no duck, he just doesn't love the wet track. He can operate on better surfaces. We saw in the Livermore, et cetera, last year uh, when it was a touch better than what he'll find probably tomorrow. But um, yeah, I'm just wanting to take a set. He's currently at $12, opened at 10. I marked him a 4% chance, so I wouldn't be touching yeah. anything around Just Ask Me until, in, until he was quoted at 20 and above. But um, yeah, look, his, his turn might come in about two or three runs. I think they might quickly back him up next week at our Pony and then go on to the Livermore. But for tomorrow's yeah. assignment, I just don't think it's quite the setup for Paulie, him. Uh, Paulie, Just Ask Me. Come on. Yeah. He's got a half the size of Texas, isn't uh, he? Uh, yeah. Crikey. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess. Look, the weight is a concern, uh, as Steve mm. said, even with the four kilo claim, he's got to carry 59 and a half. It's going to be very, very tough. He he showed a huge turn of foot there to come from last yeah, on the turn yeah. um, against a field that hadn't really done it. I think he, did he give the field seven kilos or something yeah. in that open Aki Cup? It was a huge, huge win. Um, so he's obviously... Uh, Look, I think you've still got to have him somewhere if you're taking your first fours and things like that. Um, he's got to be slotted in there somewhere. Um, I didn't want to look at Helena Baby. Mm, um, down to that race as well. Yeah, yeah, he's won a, he's won a few cups. He's won a couple of Open Aki Cups. Um, I think he has, yeah. Um, and, oh, look, he gets a, a better draw this time. Uh, I think if Alan Nicholas can give him a wee bit more of an economical run, mm. I think they'll try and use the gate. I don't see a huge yeah. amount of speed. I had Chajaba leading. Uh, but outside that, Helena Baby should hold a spot from one. Dawn Parade on the prowl may go four from Sticky Gates. But overall, I think once they find their feet, jockeys and horses after the first furlong, they might back off the tempo. If Helena Baby does trail, then I've got Flower of Wanaka three back rail, a similar position, which what it was a few weeks ago. That could be problematic, but. Uh, we'll just see how the track's playing throughout the day. OK, Paulie, what are we, how are we attacking this race from a betting perspective then? Well, Mustang Valley is the, the class horse in, mm -hmm. in the race and um, down to 57 uh, is a huge, huge chance. But I'm looking elsewhere. Um, good, good. I don't mind the look of ladies, man. Uh, I, and mm -hmm. I see we've just drifted out to $8 as well. So I'm willing to have a, a little stab with Michael McNabb in the saddle um, and Helena Baby um, each way. Hopefully he gets... Uh, Softish time That's up so on the scene. Correct. Yeah, OK. BP, can you get away from Mustang Valley or you can have a little bit on Flower of Wanaka? I, I'm a Mustang Valley, but Flower of Wanaka is my uh, clear second pick uh, in the race. I'm always wary of Helena, Helena Baby when the horse goes to uh, New Plymouth. I, I could roll out another famous uh, commentary call of mine with Helena Baby, but I'm, I'm not going to. Oh. But uh, oh. you thought I was going to do that, didn't I? <laughs> uh, but uh, July 2019, if you just want to sort of go back and have a look at Bruce Sherwin's call of Helena Baby's first Open Aki Cup, it, it, it's, it, it's a beaut uh, and, and one that you just maybe want to have on your phone as a as a dial tone or something like that. Just it's 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 an absolute <laughs> cool, beauty. Of course, as we all uh, do. From, yeah. From, from Bruce Sherwin. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I like those two. Mustang Valley, Flower of Wanaka, uh, and, and maybe Helena Baby can run a bit of a race uh, with a couple of kilos coming off. I did see it had a jumping trial recently too before its last start uh, to the mm. races. So I wonder if maybe that's something we'll see from him uh, maybe next season with Helena Baby. But yeah, can't get away from that fixed Quinella. I think it's 650 at the moment, Mustang Valley and Flower of Wanaka. Okay, at Helena Baby at $21. You know what they say when they stick them over the... Uh School them over the fences, can bring him on. $21, a bit of money. And then the baby Paul and BP have him in the numbers. OK, boys, time for Minute with Moate. Paul, who have we got this week? Uh, a former winner of the Jockey Premiership. So let's take a look. Time for another Minute with Moate. And this time I've got champion New Zealand jockey Lisa Allpress. Lisa, thanks for coming along today. Thanks for having me. Oh, obviously, I'm a bit small to stack shelves, so I don't know, probably a um, bit for or something. 
messiest shock it could potentially be me because I sort of come in like a bit of a hurricane always running late or a million things to do or a million things to think about but um, yeah I'd probably say me my very first nickname was Wurz, Wurz or Gummidge not <laughs> cool <laughs> eh? Um, my best friend's parents gave that to me so I used to have really long hair as a kid and it was always pretty wild and um, yeah, I didn't care much for brushing my hair back in those days. I don't really watch a lot of TV. It would be Trackside or, um, I don't know, I was right into a bit of um, Yellowstone. Well, it wouldn't be pole vaulting or high jump, would it? Um, maybe, clearly not shot put, I'm not good at that either. Um, yeah, is there one for, you know, just going out having a good time? I'll just be there, I'll just be part of the team. Probably winning that race in Saudi Arabia was pretty amazing. You're competing on the world stage with the likes of Mike Smith, Frankie Dettori, um, just in Olivia um, Pallier, just to name a few, like Joe Marrera, they're, you know, real first-class jockeys. So, a huge yeah, just to be there and compete against them, to win that race, to be the first woman in the world to do, to ride a winner in Saudi Arabia was pretty special and um, one they'll really look back on. Oh God, just getting out to go dancing would be a good thing uh, at the moment. It's, um, yeah, no, I'm pretty much flat getting out to go dancing. Date night for me, sitting in front of the fire, bottle of wine, um, watching a movie or just hanging out with Carl and the kids. Thank you, Lisa Albrecht, for taking the time out to spend a minute with Mawadi. Favourite TV show? I thought she was going to, you should have sort of prompted her before the interview to say the leg up. She, she, she went with trackside, she nearly got there, but... I think she wanted to, you know, keep her bases covered. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah all didn't, of trackside. Didn't want, yeah, didn't want to, like, make us the favourite, even though I'm sure we are. Of course, I'm 100%, I have no doubt about that. OK, thank you, Lisa Allpress, for taking the time. Um, we want to head to Tirapa, boys, uh, on Sunday. Big meeting, obviously. I want to have a look at one race there, but run us through the uh, weather and track, Steve. Currently a soft seven there, so graphic looking at Thad uh, Thaddeus. Mm. Rails out three metres. Um, look, they've had a little bit of rain, the la well, no rain the last 24 hours, but a little bit of rain in the last seven days, in fact, 21.5 mils to be exact. The weather is pretty good between now and Sunday, so I'm looking for an upgrade, possibly playing on a five deck come Sunday. Yeah, OK, big. Oh, sorry, let's have a look at the market. The race we want to have a look at is obviously the sprint uh, at Tirapa and an interesting runner back in business here, Stephen Sacred Satono. Heads the market, 3.30, comes out of that fantastic crop of three-year-olds last season. In front of Bonnie Lass at 4.8, on the bubble, $6 third fave. Johnny Johnny, $7 with Not Guilty. Double figures around Mercurial at 12, Highlighter at $14. Clever Rudd, 16, resumes. Tightline at 26 with Amis Moi. And Paisley Park at 31. Look, there's no real lead thus far. This market's only been open for roughly 12 hours, Thaddeus, mm. but Secret Satona heads the market at 3.30 on the back of some really good trials. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an interesting runner to, uh, I would have thought, price up BP, but an interesting runner mm. to maybe have a bet on Sacred Satona. We know how good he was as a three-year-old and how competitive he was. Uh, went to Wazzy and ran in some very strong races. He did. Look, look, look this could be the race of the weekend, uh, and it's 4.30 on Sunday. Uh, the, this is a super race, uh, the, the, this on the weekend. And that's before, and that, what do you have before then? The Canterbury Vale Stakes, the good racing out of New Plymouth. Of course, two great Northerns to look forward to as well. But this race here really does uh, potentially have a feeling of, of race of the weekend. Because when you've got horses like Johnny Johnny in the race, Bonnie Lass, Group 1 performer as a two-year-old, trialled like a bomb. Uh, you've got speed uh, from horses like Tightline, Johnny Johnny, Bonnie Lass. Uh, you've got a, a winter performer like Highlighter. You've a return of Not Guilty. And then this horse here in Sacred Satono, who had a very good three-year-old season uh, and has... He's trialled super as well, hasn't he? Uh, I really like both of his trials. Now, his form, if you, if you break it down with what he was able to do, look how close up he was in the three-year-old Karaka Million Classic. Now, that, that's one of our A-grade races from last season for the three-year-olds. It was won by Prowess, second was Wild Knight, third was Desert Lightning, fourth was Legato. He's run into fifth position in that race, and he wasn't that far off them. He was in that, that strong glump of horses uh, across the line. Uh, that he, he is a, a, a good horse to look out for and $3.30, I can understand why he is the favourite. But boy, uh, away from him, there is a number of good chances. And even on the bubbles, didn't even mention him. I thought his run at Topol was very good. Uh, he is a Group 1 winner uh, in the race. Uh, this is going to be a beaut. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the top two, I mean, Bonnie Lass, 
uh, poorly. Uh, we know how good she was, and that win in the Swainess at Rotorua was strong. Very, very good. I think it was Craig Grills on that time. Um, he gave her a beautiful ride. I tucked in behind the leader, the gap open, and then uh, she accelerated through. Um, and it was a fantastic win. And that was, she's, um, that was off a nice trial. And she comes off a nice trial this time as well. So, yeah, certainly she's in the numbers. I've got her there. I do like her. Mm. Um, it, it's just a fascinating race because you've got, and here's, here's the trial. Um, that you won. Hmm. It's just a fascinating race. We've got not a lot of horses coming back off a trial or two or maybe a start, and then you've got one or two that have, well, you'd have to say match fit, someone hmm. like a highlighter. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yes, Bonnie Lass. Uh, where, where does she map, yeah. though? What, from well, the wide like, gate? She's drawn a wide gate. There's a ton of speed in this race. You've got Johnny Johnny going for tight line, who's drawn one barrier underneath. Bonnie Lass, so she could be able to follow that particular runner. You've got Clever Rudd's Not Guilty Highlighter. They all use an inside draw. If they go really hard, she might be able to slot in somewhere, but yeah, I'm just not sure where she draws. And obviously the negative is the is the big weight. She's hard horse to place in mm. terms of handicap conditions, but gee, she's lethal first up, there's no doubt, and no, uh, no negative there. Oh, speaking of lethal first up, Johnny Johnny fits right into that sort of uh, category, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, he does. Is he first up, Johnny Johnny? Oh, look, he, he, off a break. he's had a bit of a freshen up. Mm. He was meant to run in the Foxbridge, got scratched in the morning, and that That's turned right. all the maps upside down because everybody That's thought right. that he was going to ignite the hot tempo. And But they went fairly hard in the Foxbridge as it is without him. But, uh, yeah, mm. not sure where he's at. Again, he's a hard horse to place. He finds himself at the top of the handicaps. Oh, I, I kind of feel I rated him a better chance in the Foxbridge if he had gone to that race healthy and fit. But... I'm just not sure in terms of going back to handicap conditions with the improving track. OK, what about on the bubble, Steve, resuming at Topor? Um, ran a nice third. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do we, are we going to talk about the market fluctuations, I guess? Uh, I think we have to, Thaddeus. I mm. think we have to. He opened roughly around about 3.8. Got backed into 260, 270 from memory. And in the last three to four minutes, he went from 270, 280 all the way up to $7 in terms of an SP. So, look, that drift was purely down in the instructions of where the horse was to be ridden and mapped. He'd shown tactical speed and led in a couple of trials leading in. He'd drawn an inside gate at Taupo on that occasion and they went back to last rail. That's no negative, that's the instructions, fair enough. He's got a big campaign ahead of him. He ran home strongly, But yeah. the market knew, definitely the market knew. There's no doubt that was uh, in collation with the map in terms of how he drifted in the last three to four minutes. Mm. He got to the outside, he ran the best sectionals in the race, albeit that was 75 grade, and the overall speed rating was on part of the 75 grade. He still needs to improve two or three lengths, stepping up to open class horses, even though he's dropping it a little bit in weight. Yeah, OK. Uh, Pop's not guilty. Uh, we're going to have a look at the trial um, for, at Te Awamutu, around mm. not guilty. I'd say $7 in this market, so has to be accorded a fair chance. I think so. Look, a horse who's won first up before uh, at this venue, good barrier draw, should be able to just sit away from that speed. This is one of those horses that'll appreciate tempo with a good draw uh, and, and can just let everything all unfold uh, around her uh, and she can just try and find that sweet spot uh, in behind all the pressure. That I'm sure that would be the way that they'd want to play it with her. But the quality horse, we saw her... Uh, placed in a, in a lightning uh, as well, last preparation when she was able to finish third behind Maria Farina. That trial is going to bring her on nicely, nice quiet trial and behind a stakes performer uh, in Devastate. So, yeah, look, there, there is a torrent of speed in this race. I just wonder maybe with Bonnie Lass that they look to play it neutral with her from, from, from such an awkward gait with all that speed around her. Do they look to try and, as you said, Stephen, try and find her, maybe try and slide, hope that they can find some sort of three wide train with her that might be the best possible answer with her or do they try and track over some speed but uh, the only problem with that is it, it could be terminal if they do something like that but uh, yeah, if she'd drawn low I, I would be almost pretty close to marking her as my top selection in the race body last with how she's trolled up and what she's done in a previous campaign winning that Swainess fresh up last season at weight for age level but I just can't get away from Sacred Satono just with how mm. he's trolled and he's a horse that you know, can put himself in the race as well as much as they're all that Red hot tempo, he can take a position also, Sacred Satono, uh, and I'm just happy to be with him uh, with where he sits at this stage in this race. Okay, Paulie, what final thoughts here in the very good sprint at Tidapa on Sunday? Johnny Johnny has always been very, very You're good to us here at Johnny Johnny, man. So I'm happy to jump on. You're going to stay with Johnny Johnny? I will.
<laughs> Fair enough. Okay, Steve, I just want to quickly touch on the two jumping features because it is great Northern Day. Let's have a look at the hurdle first. Uh, it's race number four on the card. Uh, who, who's heading up the market there and who do we need to know about and from a betting perspective? Well, it's 3.20 each of two, Nedwin Tyker. Now, Tyker mm. has been the initial firm of Thaddeus mm. Open, $3.80. It was in that clear second line, but now 3.20 each of two. So on that score, Tyker is clearly the best bet runner, holds four mm. times more money than Nedwin. So um, you've got English Gambler there who will appreciate the improving track distance. A little bit of Aquarius in that third line at $4 and Country Bumpkin True. at 7.5. Okay, who's your bet in the hurdle, BP, in, in a word? Look, English Gambler was very impressive there a couple of weeks ago on Foxbridge Plate Day. Uh, he'll like the better track conditions. W what I do like is he settled in that race. He was able to get it bang on right. Hamish McNeil, can he go back to back in terms of a great Northern Hurdle winning jockey? He did it last year with Abu Dhabi. He gets a really good chance here with this horse. Um, He'll give you a sight, and with mm. what I saw there a couple of weeks ago, there's no reason why he can't continue on and be strong over 4,200 metres because he was strong past the line. Uh, and as for the steeplechase, well, I, th I think this is a race where, uh, look, it's the setup we want. We, when we get to this point of the season, uh, in the jumping season, you want to see your best horses competing against each other. You've got West Coast, who's been able to take all before him again, up against the Cossack. You know who has been our premier jumper for for the last couple of seasons. I, I think it's going to be an absolute doozy, and maybe those better track conditions will just slightly help the Cossack over over West Coast if you're trying to find some sort of line. But there's nothing between both of those two great horses in the bidding. Trying to do better, can't get no worse. What I done wrong, I done right. It's my darkness in the sunshine. Righto boys, confessional time, Group 1 weekend at Hawke's Bay. There must have been a few errors made that our viewers need to know about BP. We're going to come to you. Confess your sins. <laughs> right, I'm going to go to NFL, American football, uh, <laughs> Monday night football. Aaron Rodgers, first game for a new team in the New York Jets. And I was like, yes, I am really liking what I see here. The setup, he's got some targets. I think Aaron Rodgers might be able to throw over 235 yards. I'm pretty keen to get around that particular bet type. That lasted all of 75 seconds, and in one drive, he is out of the game with an Achilles injury and is potentially career-ending uh, injury for Oof. Aaron Rodgers. So apologies, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Played hard on the over. Didn't last that long. Potentially, he might be done and dusted. Oh, that is a bit uh, ill-making. Paulie, what do you need to confess this week, please? Before I get to my confession, I'd like to make a suggestion. Um, yes. And no, in fact, I'd like to make a nomination. Sure. Defensive Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. Brendan Popperwell. <laughs> he stopped Aaron Rodgers 75 seconds into his New York Jets career. <laughs> a few weeks back, he stopped Dallin watney Zalesniak oh, yeah. from scoring a try. A lot of NRL, NRL clubs struggled to do that this year. So <laughs> he's, he goes into the number one. He's the favourite, to be fair. I should probably Defensive take the player of the year. I should take the Sean Johnson shirt off then, shouldn't oh, I? Hope no, no, he is playing. Don't even say it. <laughs> and, and the hat. And, and, yeah, the hat, and the hat as well. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, oh. okay. Anyway, Paulie, my yeah, confession. confession. Um, last Friday, I got tipped out Jimmy Starr um, oh, gee. by a reliable source. Forgot to actually put the bet on. Mm. What started? What an ESP of around ten dollars. Oh, but good one. Did you back anything in the race? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, no, okay. no, I didn't. No. Missing the bets you don't take. We've all got a few of those. Steve, what do you need to confess to me this week? Well, leading into the uh, the Tarzino, I took on the Foxbridge form line. Uh, I was hoping for Legado, Sharp and Smart, La Creek form line would stack up. Uh, just wasn't quite right, was I, with the Quinella and the Foxbridge. Mm. Obviously, uh, the other way around, with Skewiff winning and Dragon Leap second, uh, but the Foxbridge form line overall standing up very strongly when it came to our first group one. Oh, yeah. Oh, time for some foreplay, gents. We have to be due. We've missed uh, three weeks in a row, so I'm thinking whoever the lucky winner is this week, is in for a win with our four leg multi bet. Uh, be in to win the $100 bonus bet multi on this four play. These four legs go to the TAB Facebook page. The question will be up in a few hours' time around, uh, around the leg up question. So find the question, interact with it on the Facebook page, and you could be in to win this $100 bonus bet on the four play multi. BP, what have you got for us this week for this week's four play? 
I'm going to the Warriors. Uh, let's go to Saturday night against the Newcastle Knights. Let's have our fingers and toes crossed uh, that Sean Johnson is playing because if he is playing, I think he can guide the team to a victory and get themselves ready for an ambush to take on the Brisbane Broncos <laughs> next week. I love it. This man, he's a, it, but he, keeping the faith is all what BP is all about. Paul, your four play bet for the weekend. Uh, I'm heading to New Plymouth Race 3 there, and um, there's not too many meetings at New Plymouth that Alan Sherrick doesn't pick up a winner, so I've gone with his uh, three-year-old Brazen Bell to finish top four. I see there's already been some money for it too in the win market, 320 into 280. Um, so we've got the top four at $1.30 to be ridden by Lisa Allpress. Stephen? In New Plymouth, the feature there, the open 14, the best horse in the field, Mustang Valley top four at $1.25. And I've gone to continuing my uh, going against the Australians. I've got Fiji plus 20 and a half points at $1.20. So I took the Georgians plus 30 odd last week, easily fell in. So I'm again a, a winner in the foreplay. But um, that's the foreplay this week. Go to the Facebook page. You could be in to win that bonus bet. That could return you $212. Right, it's best bet time, boys. We want to have a look at how we did last week first. Yeah, look, I was really waiting for the odds to come out for Ruakaka, and when they came out, I, I sort of had to rub my eyes a couple of times when I was looking at the horse I want to have a bet on. Pearl of Alsace came up at $2.40. Pearl of Alsace running on late now. It's taking the lead here. Fontaine, uh, Al Vincent will look at Pearl of Alsace flying home down the outside. She'll miss, though. Fontaine will just beat Pearl of Alsace, who was outstanding. Oh, I've learnt my Tiako lesson. <laughs> you come uh, back on the train, guys. Yeah, so I'm uh, going to Hastings, uh, race five, the El Rocker, Sir Colin Meads trophy, uh, and the form two-year-old of last season, Tokyo Tycoon. And on the outside, Tokyo Tycoon is starting to release here. And Tokyo Tycoon race to the lead, put him away in a few strides. What a wonderful return. He's just a grand racehorse. He'll win. I'll head up to Ruakaka, race for the Kitty Kitty Cup over 2,200 metres. Number four, the local Cake by the Ocean. Cake by the Ocean just held up there. And behind them is like a lot at the 200 metres. Mara Jan still giving plenty. Leotrim Lad on the inside. He's in for the fight. They get to the 100 metres. Leotrim Lad, Mara Jan trying hard on the outside. And then Cake by the Ocean. Leotrim Lad and Mara Jan, they hit it. Leotrim Lad. Ooh, we weren't a mile away. We were not a mile away last week, gents. Paul, you weren't a doubter. You got there. Yep. <laughs> Take care of Tycoon. That's right. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, just another day at the office for you, I know, of course. But BP, uh, Paul of, Pearl of Alsace will keep, I think they might have say off the back of that. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it will. <laughs> Wow, we um, right. <laughs> this way, let's, let's get straight to it. Uh, Tavernia for me uh, in race number three uh, over 1,200 metres. Taking a little risk here. I, this is a horse who won a maiden race on a heavy surface. It was very good through the three-year-old season with the effort in a Wellington Guineas. I, I did like the most recent trial that was behind Stunning Myrie. Now, of course, that horse came out uh, and was victorious on the weekend. Uh, out of Ruakaka. It was a very good trial behind that runner. Warren Kennedy riding for the uh, Walker Burgesson team. Happy to just sort of hope that she can tuck him behind them and she can have that last shot at them. So Tavernia, uh, around that 240 mark, there's already been some early bets around here. Race three at Rickerton. Yeah, OK. Has been a little move around Tavernia, so the BP might be on the right track there. Paul, continue your winning form. You're storming into the 40% uh, ROI. What's your best bet this weekend? Uh, I'm sticking with the Walker Burgesson uh, oh, dynamic found duo. A little, found uh, a niche here. Yeah, um, and I love the look of uh, Star of Justice. Uh, I think this is the uh, trial here, but um, uh, that last start, for that fourth, on uh, debut, was on yeah. a heavy 10 at Awapuni. So back on top of the ground, I think Blinker's going on. Warren Kennedy. In fact, oh, here we go, me and VP, Warren Kennedy, oh, Walker Burgesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think we're onto something. OK, that was an impressive trial, actually. The Son of Justify, I see. Um, daughter. Star, well. Daughter, sorry. Oh, was, uh, yeah, OK. Yep. The yep. Kentucky Derby winner. OK, Indeed. Star of Justice for Paul. Steve, where's your best bet this weekend? Yeah, I'll go to Sunday, race five, the open mile. Turn the ace. 
Look, he's just been running through the roof. He drops in weight on Sunday with that claim, gets to 52 and a half with Alan Nicholas doing the riding. I think he gets a default lead. He's meeting a lot of horses here that are resuming and looking for a mile and a quarter already in their preparation. Turn the ace, best bet of the day. OK, boys, we need to go three from three this week with our best bets. We need a four-play home. We also want to get stuck into a few promos. Paul, how are we going to do that? Uh, well, we've got, uh, what have we got? We've got the bonus back on Saturday. The first four races at uh, Rickerton, New Plymouth, Randwick and Flemington. Excellent. Um, and that's for second, third and fourth. Um, so just head to the TAB website to check out all the T's and C's there. Um, what else have we got? You should be ready for this. This is this is your big moment to shine. No deductions, no surprises. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> yeah. I know you didn't want me to mention uh, that, but yeah, 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 no yeah. deductions, no surprises. And of course the... Um, Dead Heat rules as well. Yeah, okay. Very good. Get to the TABLE website, get to the Pundits Lounge, check out all those promos. BP, it's time to bid you farewell. Good luck to them. It's tomorrow night, isn't it? The Warriors, good luck. Uh, yep. Fingers crossed they get the job done. Yes, well, I, I, this Saturday I'm actually covering the Rickerton races, uh, uh, filling in for, for Aidan Roddy, so looking forward to getting down there and, uh, and taking part in that. Of course, my flight home is at 6 o'clock. And um, just checking the timetable here when the Warriors play, and whoa, they play at 6 o'clock as well, and I land at 7.45, so I missed the entire game uh, tomorrow <laughs> night. And no, I'm not going to turn my phone off and get home and try and watch it because I'm, I can't watch delayed sports. So hopefully when I turn my phone in and touch down in Hamilton, I'll find out that the Wars are home. Talk about commitment, BP. I mean, to, to, the, to the task, to the job, you know, to trackside and to the industry. You missing a Warriors game, it's just almost unbelievable. Yeah, well, well that's, that's what we've got to do. And uh, we've got a great Northern day the next day, so it's going to be a, a busy old weekend. And uh, I, I can't actually wait for it. I'm looking forward to it, getting down to record and, and then backing up the next day for what is a super card out of Tarapa. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, racing-wise, it's going to be an absolute bumper. Absolutely. We've got a bumper weekend with like Saturday and, and Sunday. You What's and it? me missing a lunch date. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss too many lunches around here, that's for no. sure. OK, boys, thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. What are you up to this weekend? Oh, I'll be watching the races. Shock horror. From the couch. Oh, yeah. no, I've got the weekend off. So I'll be watching that. You've always, what do you mean you've got the weekend off? <laughs> Finally. Uh, <laughs> and up the wires, of course. Yeah, and up the wires. Thank you, Stephen, for your help, as Just always. Just that is. Yeah, and we'll see you next week. What are we doing next week? Do we know? Uh, I think it's our Perny from memory. Mm, uh, Metro okay. Mile Day, possibly. Yep, mm. no, yep. very good. OK, boys, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us once again on The Leg Up. We'll see you in seven days' time.